Is Kuala Lumpur worth visiting? I would say yes. The city surprised me. Even though back home in the U.S. I'm from a major city. I'm not a city person or a city guy. If you have followed my journey, you always hear me say I'm a beach person. I'm a beach guy. Wearing less is best is my motto. I like beaches, sand, oceans, wearing sandals, wearing no shirt. And here in Malaysia, there are beaches but the proximity of the beach from here from the city is not very close but despite not being a city guy i enjoyed my time here and meeting with people i met online to meeting finally face to face and them showing me their city if you remember my morocco videos the very first video i mentioned it was a handful of countries i wanted to experience as my first Muslim countries and Malaysia was on that list. So comparing Morocco, I enjoyed Malaysia much more. I would say Morocco is a Muslim majority country, but their constitution do guarantee freedom of religion, but Islam plays a significant role in the country's culture and social life. Where here in Malaysia, it is also a Muslim majority country. Islam is the official language of Malaysia, but I would say about maybe 60% of the population practice Islam. Malaysia constitution also guarantees freedom of religion, but I feel here in Malaysia, because it's more diverse than Morocco, the landscape of religion is just a little bit more vast because of the diversity. So I find the culture and social life in Malaysia way better than Morocco because of diversity. Kuala Lumpur is a city that is worth visiting because number one, it's clean, it's modern, and it's really easy to get around with, put in parentheses, and cheap rail network. The airport here was friendly and efficient. It wasn't confusing as some countries you might go to once you get off the plane. you kind of confused because it's different lines. It's a different language that you might not know. And it's just your first time. But here in Malaysia, especially in Kuala Lumpur, majority of the people, they speak English. Things are in English and other languages. So you're not going to find it hard or difficult when visiting here and getting around. Also what I really like about Kuala Lumpur is that there are a lot of nice parks and malls. And Kuala Lumpur is one of those cities where it feels safe for tourists to wander around and just see what is interesting. You're not gonna feel unsafe or thinking somebody might try to come by and steal something from you. It's very safe here. And what me and my friends ended up doing was just to go on the metro, go on the rail system, and see what they thought I would be interested in and you just end up in random places for example just like here in an aquarium and out of all my travels throughout different continents I would say that the most safest continent that I've traveled to is the continent of Asia compared to other continents like South America Europe even my own continent North America and Africa, I would say Asia is the safest. When I come to Asia, no matter what country I go to, I do not feel unsafe, unlike other continents that I mentioned. I'm not a huge shopping mall fan when it comes to buying clothes or electronics. I mostly go for food, but the shopping malls here are humongous, super modern shopping experiences that you might do not experience in other countries or continents. And once you go outside of these super modern shopping malls, you'll see small shops or vendors selling more items that could be more food options or things you might have saw inside, but now at a bargain price. If you're a foodie or if you're just a person that when you travel, you like to try different types of foods, then you'll like the foods here. Even though I got sick here, I wouldn't say that the foods are bad. The foods here are priced good along with interesting flavors. So you might be thinking, well, how long do you need in Kuala Lumpur? 
Well, I hear some people say, well, I recommend three to five days so that you have time to really explore the city. Then I hear other people say, but if you only have one or two days, can you still enjoy some of the best things in Kuala Lumpur? And the best answer to that is it all depends on you and your itinerary. My experience will never be your experience. So based on the time length you have in the country, it's your decision. These videos you watch is only for entertainment purposes only. These are my ideas. This is my own adventure. So to make your adventure worthwhile, you just take some notes from what I say, other travelers say, piece them all together, and make your travel itinerary based on your time length. If you only have one or two days or a couple of hours because you have a layover, then base your trip around seeing something that is the most iconic thing there. And in this case, it would be the Patronus Towers. If you're not into seeing iconic landmarks, then you base your trip around whatever that you find interesting, your likes. So if you're more into beaches, then you go and base your trip seeing that particular beach. If you're not really into beaches like that and you're more of a foodie, then you go to some of the restaurants you might have researched, Googled, or saw videos upon. So you have to do what you like based on your time length in that particular city and country. And speaking of the Patronus Towers, I finally got an opportunity to actually see the Patronus Towers in person. But I did not get an opportunity to actually go inside. But that was good enough for me. That's all I wanted to do was see the Patronus Towers, not really go inside. So... It all depends on what type of traveler you are and what you like. But there's many things to do here in Kuala Lumpur. Therefore, I feel if you make the decision to come here, you can't go wrong because it's surrounded by other countries you might have an interest in visiting as well. Even if you stay here for a day or two or weeks like I have, in simple terms, put it like this. Kuala Lumpur is a city you're not going to regret coming here or feel that you wasted your time or money. Let's just say you do decide to visit here and you don't have such a great time as I did. Guess what? If you're American, your American passport will allow you to visit other nearby countries. Guess what? Without a visa. So that's another good thing about coming here to Kuala Lumpur. If you don't have such a good time, there's other cities and other countries nearby you can go to without a visa. Now, I named this video... Is it worth visiting Kuala Lumpur? Because there's a lot of videos with that title. Is it worth visiting? I always think yes. No matter what city and a country it is. It is worth visiting. Because like I mentioned a few minutes earlier. Their vacation. Their trip. Their journey. Is not going to be yours. So every city. Every country. If you can. You have the time. You have the money. Visit for yourself. To see how you like it. Another title might mention, is it family friendly in Kuala Lumpur or should I bring my family to Kuala Lumpur? And the short answer is yes, of course. I feel that from traveling, all cities across the globe and the world are family friendly. Because guess what? When you go to that particular city, there's people there that have families. But what I would say is certain cities have areas in that particular city that is not family friendly. When is the best time of year to visit Kuala Lumpur? Well, here in Kuala Lumpur, it seems like the weather doesn't change much throughout the year. This is Southeast Asia. Therefore, it is hot and humid pretty much all year round. Even during the wet months or the rain season here in Southeast Asia, it's still warm and hot, which I like. So depending if you come here to Kuala Lumpur or you choose to go to another country like the Philippines or even Thailand or Anywhere else within the Southeast Asia range, you're not worrying so much about the weather. You're just going to think of there is a wet month or wet months and season. Depending on the country, you might want to look into the wet months to try to avoid that time. But myself, I base my trips around my time and around the proximity of other countries I might in the future want to visit in that particular continent. The only thing that I try to avoid is very cold weather because I'm not really a fan of gray skies, no sun, and just cold. To me, that equals miserable. And I'm using cold loosely. Cold to me referring to cold back home in the U.S. on the east coast of the U.S., meaning from 
the state of Virginia going all the way up north, it gets cold. So snow blizzards, snowing, to me that is cold. So if I'm going to a country that is kind of cold, but they don't receive snow blizzards, it's not snowing, then I might consider going to that country. Example, right now in my favorite country in Africa, South Africa, it is winter there. But their winter is nothing compared to the winter that I experienced back home in the U.S. So I would go there. Something else you might be thinking is Kuala Lumpur expensive. My opinion is if you're thinking a place is expensive, then you shouldn't be traveling because travel yet alone is expensive. But if we're referring to expensive as to other countries, as far as major cities go, I didn't find Kuala Lumpur to be expensive. So far, still remaining at the top of my list as my favorite city or country in Asia still remains Singapore. You know, I can't just visit Malaysia once and say, okay, now Malaysia is my favorite place. I would still say Singapore is because of the amount of times I visited and the length of times I visited Singapore. I just know more. Therefore, I have accumulated so many friends there. It still remains my favorite. But still here in Malaysia, especially in Kuala Lumpur, I still like this country. Actually, I like Malaysia way more than I like Thailand. Maybe in the future, I'll make a video about Thailand. Even though I haven't been back to Thailand in a long time, it's been a very long time. I still have some experiences there because the times I visited Singapore, I also visited Thailand at the same time way back in the days. And all I have, I think... um. I have a lot of photos. I might have some videos, so I might could piece together something and talk a little bit about Thailand. But yes, I do like or I have enjoyed Malaysia, even though it's my first time, way more than Thailand because of numerous reasons. And if I do make a future video about Thailand, I would tell you those reasons. But overall, when we're talking about expensive, I don't find the country of Malaysia being very expensive, especially compared to my favorite country in Asia, which is Singapore. Singapore is way more expensive than Malaysia and Thailand. Now my continent of Asia experiences has increased. Now I have Malaysia on my list. So I've been so far to Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Thailand. And if I only had two choices out of all the countries I just named that I visited in Asia to revisit again, it would be Singapore and Malaysia. I like Singapore and Malaysia way more than I liked Thailand and Indonesia so depending on how long you stay here in Kuala Lumpur the people you meet the experiences you gain based on the length of time you're here is going to make the trip worth it or not maybe you might not like Kuala Lumpur I highly doubt that but there might be some people out there that really don't care that much for this city there might be another city that people might not know of that's in the country of Malaysia that they like more so maybe if you do make the decision to come here to Kuala Lumpur and you have a good length of time you might want to venture out and see another city just to see the contrast between the two myself I had a good amount of length of time here but I had so many friends here in the city of Kuala Lumpur I just wanted to stay in the city and get the full experience now my next revisit here I might come back to the same city of Kuala Lumpur and stay here the remaining of my time or I might split up and go to another city you know it all depends on the time I come and the length of time I have to revisit here or to go to another city in a different country it all depends but one thing I can guarantee is I will revisit the city of Kuala Lumpur because I had such a great experience accommodations here in Kuala Lumpur well you have a vast amount of options to choose from do you want to get a hotel and be catered for or would you like the experience of doing things for yourself meaning an apartment you have both of those here but the good thing about here is that you can find an apartment that is near or inside of a mall so therefore the accommodations is much more meaning you also have the accommodations that come with being inside of a mall you have restaurants entertainment that is all walking distance from your door right into the mall well, that's it and most of the apartments well all the apartments 
or price very cheaply so that should not be a problem but if you want to go the other route and get a hotel well you have that option as well if you're the budget friendly type of person I'm pretty sure there's lots of hostels here I'm not really a hostel type person but worldwide hostels is in almost all major cities in all countries throughout the world so you should not have a problem in that department of finding a hostel so that's it it's going to be travelers who have came here with a different experience and don't want to revisit Kuala Lumpur again but listen to their story and like I mentioned piece together different experiences to make your own judgment to go or just to go based on your own desire to go and find out things on your own and make your own experiences based on no knowledge I have done that before some will say that it's not cheap here but you have to listen to the story of what it's based on is it based on they lost their phone somehow and now they bought an iPhone here and found out that it's more expensive than it was in their home country or you might hear some people complain about the long lines at the airport but they didn't talk about the time they came it was other airlines at the same time that made the lines of course longer so you have to listen to other people's stories piece together things and some things just common knowledge common sense and just make your own judgment or like I said before visit because of your own desire with no knowledge and just find out on your own make your own experiences from that the longer you stay in a certain place the more knowledge and the more experience you will gain along with the opportunity to meet more people in that city that will eventually make your trip that much more fun you know what they say the more people you know the more information you can receive the more information you can get and that will always make your trip that much more fun because you know the ins and the outs the do's and the don'ts is it real or oh, that's like an yeah, optical yeah. illusion yeah, yeah.